Hello again, and welcome to day two of week nine of year three of the Religious Education Initiative. Uh, we're going to uh, turn to a different tack and look at some of the prayers of the uh, cycle of daily services. So, uh, at sunset each day, the church celebrates the service of Vespers, which simply means sunset or evening. This service is built around the very ancient custom of lighting the lamps inside the church, while psalms are read that reflect on the coming of the night, on the rest that God gives to us, and on our expectation of the new day that is to come, and of the enlightenment that we are given by the Lord as he illumines our hearts and our minds. As the Vesper service begins, there are seven prayers that are read by the priest. They're read silently while the evening psalm is read, uh, but we will read today aloud, not silently, the third and fourth of these seven prayers. So, this is the third prayer. O Lord our God, be mindful of us sinners, your unprofitable servants, when we call upon your holy name, and put none of us to shame in our expectation of your mercy, but grant us, O Lord, all petitions unto salvation, and grant us that we may love and fear you with our whole heart and do in all things your will. For a good God and a lover of humankind are you. And to you we send up glory, to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. And then the fourth prayer. Uh, you who with never silent hymns and unceasing doxologies are hymned by the holy powers, Fill our mouth with your praise that we may ascribe majesty to your holy name and grant us a portion and lot with all that fear you in truth and keep your commandments at the intercessions of the Holy Theotokos and of all your saints. For to you is due all glory, honor, and worship to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever and to the ages of ages. Amen. There are a few things that we could point out here, but I want to kind of try to connect this to what we see with Abraham. Uh, the third prayer talks about ourselves as being unprofitable servants, servants that have provided no gain to the Lord who is our master. And we ask him to be mindful of us, to pay attention to us when we call upon him, and to not shame us as we ask for mercy. We ask him rather to give to us everything that we ask so long as, as it is for our salvation and to grant us that we can be able to love him and fear him with our whole heart and do his will in all things. Now, that idea that we are unprofitable servants, that we are not... that. God does, has not chosen us because we are uh, you know, somehow going to bring him a good gain. He hasn't chosen us because we're fruitful, because we're great, but because, well, well he's chosen us even though we are unfruitful, although we are unprofitable. Um, so in, in fact, what we're saying about ourselves is that we are like Abram was. We are like him in that he had no children. Uh, he had no way of his own power, of bringing glory to God, of, of being the father of many nations that God was looking for. Um, so in this prayer, as we identify ourselves as unprofitable, we're not saying we're no good, we're lousy, we're worthless. We're saying, like Abraham, we don't have anything to provide that doesn't come from you, O Lord. So we ask you, O Lord, as you came to Abraham, and as he grew in humility, as he walked in faithfulness, you made him an instrument of grace. You made him a vessel of glory. You made him the father of many nations. Help us to do your will also in all things. Grant us to begin by loving you and fearing you, walking in the path of Abraham. And as we love you and fear you, May we do everything that comes to us in our lives according to your will. Um, and then in the second uh, prayer, uh, the fourth prayer rather, uh, the second one we read, but the fourth from the whole list, we see uh, 
we, we, we kind of approach the same idea. Whereas we call God the one who is always glorified by the angels with hymns that never are stopped and doxologies that are never silent. Right? Um, and we ask him, uh, as he is praised by them, to also fill our mouths with his praise so that we also can give glory to him. And we ask him simply for a portion, that we may have an inheritance with everyone who fears him in truth, uh, everyone who keeps his commandments. So now we're again looking at the angels and we're recognizing that there are those who are part of God's household, part of his family, and we ask that we may be counted part of that family as well. Um, so in this case, we could say we're kind of counting ourselves like the slaves in Abraham's household. We know that there is a household. We know that there are the people that God has chosen. We know that he is always glorified by those who are faithful to him. We ask that we may be counted worthy to be with them. Um, and in this way, what we're doing is we're, we're identifying ourselves with the lowly and the weak who are always the ones that God chooses because he doesn't want people who are full of themselves, or rather he can't make use of people who are full of themselves because being full of themselves they are incapable of being instruments of God's glory because if we're full of ourselves we're only concerned about our own glory uh, we're not able to serve as fellow laborers with the Lord so we have to begin like Abraham as well as good as dead and then God will bring forth life in us that's not hard. It's not like it's difficult for us to be as good as dead. That is, in fact, our natural state. We just have to recognize it and confess our weakness, our brokenness, our need for strength, and turn to the Lord and ask him to fulfill it. This is the whole work of the Christian life. Uh, and we see it reflected not just in the story of Abraham, but in these prayers as well. So that's it for day two. God bless you all. We'll see you for day three in a moment. Well, whenever you get to this, I should say.